Hello and welcome to part five of the trigonometry review of Stevens's Matrices, Vectors, and 3D Math, a game programming approach with MATLAB. So in this trigonometry review, it's broken up into six parts, and we did triangle trig. We showed how that relates to unit circle trig, and then how that then leads to trigonometry as a period of or a collection of periodic functions of a continuous variable and then we showed some translations and transformations that allow you to change the shape, amplitude, frequency, um, and location of these periodic um, trig curves. Specifically just sine and cosine. We'll get to tangent later, but before we get to tangent I'm going to show you how to create circles and ellipses using parametric functions and um, the sine and cosine functions. Very valuable. It makes circles and ellipses really easy to produce with software. All right, so that is A5 on page 178. And so here's, here's how it goes. We're going to be looking at a bunch of these um, ellipses, partial ellipses, circles, partial circles, right? And how do we create these? And it's really quite simple, but you have to define these curves as parametric functions, meaning y, if you look at y equals f of x, that makes it really hard to create circles and ellipses. So we're not going to think of these curves in terms of y as a function of x. We're going to think of them as x being a function of t and y being a function of t. They're two different functions of a single independent variable t, often called the parameter. And t is just going to go from 0 to 2 pi. You can think of it as that um, continuous variable describing the angle as you go around the unit circle. All right? So we're going to let t go from 0 to 2 pi, meaning we're going to let it go the whole way around that unit circle. But instead of defining x and y as cos t and sine t to get the unit circle, we multiply it by um, variations of that so that we can get, say, ellipses um, one way or the other, right? Or partial ellipses. Um, okay, so the way you do that, suppose you want an ellipse centered at x0, y0. Then you take, there's the original cos t, sine t that you would have for x and y. But you add x0 to the um, x function and y0 to the y function. So that's going to give you a center at x0, y0. And then if you want an x radius of rx, and what I mean by an x radius is if you have an ellipse like this, right, then this distance here, and this is poorly written, would be the x radius. And then this distance here would be the y radius, right? So they're not necessarily the same. If they're the same, you have a circle. Right? So if you want an x radius of r sub x, you multiply the cosine t by that x radius. And if you want a y radius of r sub y, then you multiply sine of t by r sub y. And then when you plot x and y, all right, I guess if we were doing this in MATLAB, we would use the plot command just x and y, you would get circles and um, ellipses. Right? So let's take a look at these examples. And I'm going to put it into full screen mode just so that I know I get all of them in there. And I will change this so that I have the full width. OK, there we go. They fit in there? Yes, just barely. OK, so if you look at the dashed circle, that's this one right here, all right? And I'll get rid of my marker. Um, that is just a circle of radius two, right? The x radius and the y radius are both two. That makes it a circle. So that function is actually, well, the two parametric functions that define that circle, two cos t, two sine t, and t goes from zero to two pi. That makes sure that I go the whole way around, get the whole circle and stuff, just part of it. Now if we look at the dotted ellipse, right? What's that? That's this one right here. The dotted ellipse. That is centered at the origin, 
but it has an x radius of 3 and a y radius of 1. So there's our 3 for the x radius, and there's a 1 there. You can't see it for the y radius. And again, we're going to let t go from 0 to 2 pi, because I want to go the whole way around and create the entire ellipse. If you look at the solid ellipse, all right, that's this one right here, the solid ellipse. So one thing's for certain, it's not centered at the origin. All right, the center right here looks like it's 3, 3. All right, and the x radius looks like it's 1. And the y radius looks like it's 2. All right, so to create that ellipse, Here's my x center, my y center. There's my x radius, it's a one. My y radius, and when I plot that, going from zero to two pi, I get the entire ellipse. Now if I want something like a partial ellipse, like this one over here, right? I'm gonna create it as if I'm doing the whole ellipse, so I actually have a center of that ellipse, which is negative 1, uh, 3, right? And so when I'm creating that, so I'm over here, my last column. Let me erase these. All right. There's my center, negative 1, 3. I'm adding that to the cosine and the sine function, right? But now the thing is, I'm not going the whole way around. All right. I'm starting beyond zero. I'm not starting at t equals zero. If you think about t as being that parameter that goes from zero to two pi, then I'm starting on that half of ellipse. I'm starting here at theta is um, pi over two. All right? Or t. It's our parameter or our um, independent variable here is t, right? But it, 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 you think of it as an angle, right? So it's actually going from t equals pi over 2, or theta equals pi over 2, halfway around to this, which is where theta equals 3 pi over 2. So I'm only doing that sort of left half. And the way I get that left half, my functions remain exactly the same, right? I just restrict my domain for the independent variable to only give me that left half of the ellipse. And there's one thing I didn't point out here. If you look at the two different radii, the x radius looks like it's uh, 2, and the y radius looks like it's 1. So there's the x radius, there's the y radius. You're only covering the left half. So t goes from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. Right, so you can get a lot of shapes. I mean, you can do quite a bit with um, these parametric definitions of ellipses and circles and partial circles and partial ellipses to get some pretty good um, shapes. Right, and it's much easier than trying to to define these things in terms of y equals f of x. Right, we don't want to do that. We want to use parametric equations, parametric functions, if you will, of this form where you have x is a function of t, y is a function of t, and t goes through some domain. All right, so that wraps up ellipses and circles, and our next chapter, the final chapter before the um, assignment, is the tangent function. So we'll do that next. See you then.